Now live from the Devil Radio Studios in Madison, Wisconsin, where the political party is just beginning. Welcome to the Devil's Advocate Show. Friends proving it's never personal, only politics. Please allow me to introduce myself. Here is your host, Mike Crute. Welcome to the Devil's Advocate's Radio Show. Dominic, it's Monday, but it's much, much more than that. It's Joe Biden, Eve in Milwaukee. It's Fulton County Indictment Watch all across the nation. And it's a love filled Monday edition. Welcome to it, fella. Hey, Crudy. Happy Monday. Nate, working the board, our fair audience. Happy Monday to us all. Yeah, man. A lot going on today. Tom, let's let's start close to home. Let's start with, you know, relations between let's call it the uh, legislative branch and the judicial branch. The separate and co-equal branches of government, Crudy. Well, don't tell that to Robin Voss. He would say, you know, some are more co-equal than others, if you know what I'm saying. But uh, his message for the newly installed Supreme Court Justice, Janet Protasiewicz, reportedly liberal Janet Protasiewicz, while the conservative, the Republican, Robin Voss says, basically, recuse or be impeached on the issue of gerrymandering. And she said, effectively, the maps are rigged. And, of course, it's generally only by the virtue of the rigged maps that Robin Voss is the Speaker of the Assembly here in the state of Wisconsin. (laughs) And has any power or ability to even try to impeach a sitting Wisconsin Supreme Court justice. Well, by a two-thirds majority, despite the fact in every statewide election, Democrats seemingly win. See the prior election of Janet Protasiewicz by 11 points. Robin Voss. Voss says uh, lawmakers, easy for me to say, I got (laughs) Monday. Here we go, every Monday. Got the Mondays now, (laughs) may consider impeachment if Protasiewicz doesn't recuse from the redistricting case. Again, And he is the Speaker of the Assembly only by virtue of the fact that they have a two-thirds majority, even though they can't win a statewide election. If Wisconsin Supreme Court Justice Janet Protasiewicz does not recuse from lawsuits challenging Robin Voss's ultimate authority, I mean, the state's (laughs) legislative boundaries, Republicans who control the state legislature, and by that I mean Boss Voss, might consider impeachment proceedings the Assembly's top Republican Said Friday, Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, a Republican from Rochester, said in an interview on WSAU. Now, that is an inferior whitey, righty talk radio product. The the quality of the product inferior, Dom. But the signal, massive. Covers the entirety of the Northwoods, WSAU. So when he goes on that station, he's talking to about half of Wisconsin. Anyways. He, Robin Voss, does not believe impeachment should be considered lightly by lawmakers. But he's considering it lightly for Protasiewicz, right? Yeah. But he said the idea could move forward if Protasiewicz does not recuse herself on cases he said she prejudged during her campaign for a seat on the state's highest court. If there's any semblance of honor on the state Supreme Court left, you cannot, (laughs) you cannot, Tom, have a person who runs for the court prejudging a case and being open about it that's the that's the part that really troubles you because of course you know all of your candidates preferences on every single case that's why you support them but anyways uh you know she she basically let the cat out of the bag dumb she prejudged uh let me finish the quote if there's any semblance of honor on the state supreme court left you cannot have a person who runs for the court prejudging a case and being open about it, and then acting on the case as if you're an impartial observer. Now, he said that to host Meg Elfson when asked whether the legislature could successfully defend the current boundaries with a liberal-controlled state Supreme Court. They could not. There is no rational way, Dom, as far as I'm concerned, to defend these boundaries 
So you better start going after the, uh, what, the referees, the judges? Well, it's a very interesting quote, and there's more to the quote from Voss on Friday. But what, when he says, if there's any semblance of honor on the Supreme Court left, well, this is interesting. What, what, what has happened, in your opinion, Speaker Voss, to bring dishonor to the Supreme Court? Because I bet we probably think the same thing, but I, I'm not sure that uh, dishonor might be there, but maybe for different reasons. Uh, Voss goes on to say in his interview, you cannot have a judge who said, you know, the maps are rigged because she bought into the argument that that's why we're winning elections, not the quality of our candidates. And then she sits in a trial acting like she's going to listen and hear both sides fairly. That just can't happen. See how he always throws it in there, Crudy? You know, better candidates, better ideas. Well, I know he says that. He almost got beat by Adam Steen. It was like 300 <laughs> ballots. You know, the former president endorsed against him, as did his, what, special sauce prosecutor, Gableman, who he later called an embarrassment to the state. But the court was honorable under Gableman, who you hired, right? Yeah, right. I, I just want to remember, you know, days gone by. Uh, I think it's a more important. honorable court um, yeah, back in the day with the choking and, and, and the Gableman's. Yeah, that was that was very honorable. Well, um, Gableman came to the court under a cloud of ethical scandal. Uh, he racially went after his opponent, Lewis Butler, and he won. You know, he won election to the court, Tom. But of course, the Wisconsin Supreme Court can only judge itself. So when it was considered that he might have broken some ethical rules, well, there was no slap on the wrist or anything for the corrupted former Supreme Court Justice Gableman because only they could decide whether or not they were going to censure themselves. See the aforementioned Chokin Prosser. Molly Beck at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel continues. In January, Protosewitz called the state's legislative maps rigged in a public forum, and in March, she told Capital Times reporters in a podcast interview she would enjoy taking a fresh look at the gerrymandering question. Quote, they do not reflect people in the state. I don't think you could sell any reasonable person that the maps are fair, Protosewitz, a former Milwaukee County judge, said in the January forum. I can't tell you what I would do on a particular case, but I can tell you my values. And the maps are wrong. So there you go. That, that that's that's the what what how did he put it? That's the prejudging of the case, according to Robin Voss. I can't tell you what I would do on a particular case, but I can tell you my values, and the maps are wrong. But by virtue of the rigging of the political maps, the legislative maps here in the state of Wisconsin, despite the quote unquote liberal, the Democratic majority here in statewide elections, Robin Voss is Speaker of the Assembly, and effectively between him and the Senate, they have the votes to impeach. They could take out a Supreme Court justice before she could turn or rule upon this 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 decision. Although I think Tony Evers would have the right to appoint and reappoint and reappoint. Voss suggested if Protosewitz does not recuse from cases involving the maps, she would violate her oath of office, which might push lawmakers to consider impeaching her. You know how Republicans care so much about their oath of office, Gertie. I want to look and see. Does she recuse herself on cases where she has prejudged? That is, to me, is something that is at the oath of office and what she said she was going to do to uphold the Constitution. That, to me is a serious offense. Voss said court decisions wouldn't trigger impeachment discussions. Another quote, it can't be because they make the decision on a court case that I disagree with, right? Question mark. Right? right? Be... But that's exactly why you would consider doing this. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You would no, just no, get no, to no. it before no. the ruling came out. Do not let him finish. Can I finish? Can, can Voss finish, please? Right, right, Crudy. Voss wants to finish. Voss says. Right. Right? right, right. It has to be where they violate the oath of office, right? Justice Protosewitz, who prejudged cases, doesn't recuse herself, right? That could be something we would consider. Right? 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 <laughs> wow. Uh, let's see here. Voss, um, they talk about a little bit more about Protosewitz's background. Voss also emphasized he does not support launching proceedings without careful thought. 
and said recent action taken by the new liberal majority created by Protestant's election in April do not warrant impeachment discussions. The four liberal justices in the first week moved to reduce the powers of the conservative Chief Justice Annette Ziegler and fired state courts director Randy Kochnick. I think what was happening at the Supreme Court is wrong. There is no doubt in my mind, as a non-lawyer, when I just read the language of the Constitution. As a actions, popcorn magnet. <laughs> I love popcorn. Some of the actions that they are taking are certainly constitutionally questionable. But the idea that we're going to immediately start an impeachment process is probably too radical. Unless they come right? after my power. Right. Unless they come after our cooked in the books, gerrymandered, super partisan, you know, th then impeachment will become necessary. Don. He continues. There's more. But wait, I think it's wrong that we throw that word around without much comment on how rare it should be. Because you have to have something that really rises to a level that requires the person to be taken out of office. Because remember, if an impeachment occurs, what you are saying is we are substituting our decision as elected officials for that of the voter. What you're prepared to do. Right, Robin right? Foss? Right? <laughs> right? Uh, Evan Goyke, a Democrat from Milwaukee, who's also an attorney, said Voss's suggestion that impeachment may be possible is nearly an admission of how tenuous the Republican legislative grasp on power is. That type of reaction shows how threatened the Republican majority is by a challenge to their rigged mats, maps. It's really good evidence that the state of state is gerrymandered, that they'd be willing to go to such an unprecedented maneuver. He said he believes Protoseo's comments during the campaign are not are not a basis for recusal and expects Protosewitz and other justices to follow a new recusal standard the liberal majority adopted for court operations. What about Le me, 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 me? Here's what he told WISN TV. To impeach someone, they would need to do something very serious. So no, we are not looking to start the impeachment process. It's a regularly occurring event in Wisconsin. Right? But we reserve the right to. <laughs> right? <laughs> Do you hear the song? The OJs. Love Train? That's for you, Jordan Love. Welcome to the Packers, baby. Come back with us. Devils, Advocates Radio Show. You're always a friend. If you call, 844-96-PARTY. Think you know politics? Think again. Welcome to the Devils Advocates. And we are back from the 420 break. Thank you for listening to the Devil's Advocates radio show. You can always join us on the lines at 844-967-2789. Dominic, did we mention President Joe Biden coming to Milwaukee tomorrow? Guess who will be there, Dom? You're going to be there, Crudy. Yeah, because I know you're not going to be there. <laughs> Cover the news. Someone's got to represent on behalf of the Devil's Advocates radio show. Yep. I will be there. Thank you. Representing. And look forward to being part of the coverage. Uh, me and Terry Bell, news director here for Civic Media, will be credentialed at the Biden event in Milwaukee. And uh, my understanding, he's going to a green energy plant, Dom, and he's going to give some remarks. I think it's been one year since the passage and signing into law of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. So, you know, that's part of it. And the other big part of it, of course pre-trolling the republicans because they got their <laughs> presidential debate coming to milwaukee next wednesday you'll be there right Tom. you're coming with me to the white tail milwaukee we'll be in the deer district across from the Pfizer forum doing a live show maggie's already in man flynn said yes Kristen bride the whole gang's gonna be there dom and todd alba is gonna bring some national friends he's gonna bring my understanding i'm not trying to speak out of turn here Rick Wilson from the Lincoln Project. Uh, he's also going to have uh, Trig B. Olson, a Lincoln Project member with uh, some Badger roots, Tom. So they're coming in for the pre-presidential debate. The only question, will Dom be there or will <laughs> Trump be there? Trump will not be there. Dom will be there, but I'm not clear on the bar. I haven't been there, but I look forward to checking it out. You know, That's I, was not, I was not consulted on the bar location so i'm gonna have to get with my people and and see how that's gonna go there might be some nepotism going yeah. on there. i think okay. somebody's <laughs> married to somebody. one of the owners <laughs> yeah. 
So anyways, uh, that we have to look forward to. You know, the political cycle, it's just getting started, Dom. Makes me think I should do a little self-improvement. You know, because we might get some national media <laughs> Why opportunities. Why start now, man? I mean, you know. <laughs> well, when I say self-improvement, I was just thinking, like, self-editing my Wikipedia page. <laughs> I hear that's a very important thing that people do nowadays. Well, Dan Bice over on the page six, I mean, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel is reporting this today. Supreme Court Justice Rebecca Bradley has been quietly editing her own Wikipedia page. Yeah. Quietly. Is that like editing. giving yourself a nickname? You call me T-Bone from now on. You think, uh, I call her, she has a nickname, Dom. The, the Bad, Bad Bradley. Bradley. <laughs> you think members of the state Supreme Court would have too little time on their hands to worry about the contents of their Wikipedia pages. The conservative firebrand, Rebecca Bad Bradley, isn't like most other Supreme Court justices, thank God. Last week, a person with the Twitter handle at Arizona Sunblock from Tampa, Florida, noticed that Bradley, who has been on the high court since 2015, appeared to make major changes to her Wikipedia biography earlier this year. Here's how the tweet went. Conservative Wisconsin Supreme Court Justice at Judge Bradley, Wisconsin, is currently engaging in an edit war on her Wikipedia page under an anonymous username that she also uses in her personal email. <laughs> oh, she got ratted out. Uh, the username RLGBJD, which could very well refer to Rebecca Lynn Grassle Bradley JD. She received her first law degree from the University of Wisconsin in 1996, and it turns out the Tampa tweeter had guessed correctly. Here's a quote. Liberal media has distorted my record since the beginning of my judicial career, and I refuse to let false accusations go unchecked, yeah. Bradley told the Journal Sentinel in an email. On my Wikipedia page, I added excerpts from my actual opinions and removed dishonest information about my background. What then was getting under her skin, Dom? Crudy, it's clear Bradley really, really disliked the section in her Wikipedia page dealing with a Republican challenge to the stay-at-home order issued by the administration of Governor, uh, Democratic Governor Tony Evers in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. According to her Wikipedia page, in May of 2020, Bradley compared the state's stay-at-home orders to the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II a case known as Korematsu versus the United States. Worse, perhaps, than any analogy I've ever accused you of having the worst analogy. A lot of no, bad analogies worse. going around these days. Here's what Bradley actually said, according to the video of the teleconference of the May 5th, 2020 oral arguments. Quote, I'll direct your attention to another time in history, the Korematsu decision, where the court said the need for action was great and time was short, and that justified, and I'm quoting, assembling together and placing under guard all those of Japanese ancestry in assembly centers during World War II. Could the secretary of the Wisconsin Department of Health Services, under this broad delegation of legislative power or legislative-like power, order people out of their homes into centers where they are proper where they are properly socially distanced in order to combat the pandemic the point of my question is what are the limits constitutional or statutory there have to be some don't there counsel question mark not surprisingly the reference got widespread media attention actor george uh, uh, takai 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 Takai, man sulu from from star trek yeah, yeah george takai Takai, who was in a Japanese American internment camp from ages five to almost nine, ripped Bradley over the comparison, as did the board chairman of the Japanese American National Museum. With her Wikipedia edits, Bradley dropped what she said during oral arguments and replaced it with a quote from her concurring opinion that overturned the stay at home order. Although headlines may sensationalize the invocation of cases such as Korematsu, the point of citing them is not to draw comparisons between circumstances of people horrifically interned by their government during a war and those of people subjected to isolation orders during a pandemic. We mentioned cases like Korematsu in order to test the limits of government authority to remind really? the that urging courts to approve exercises of extraordinary power during a time of emergency may lead to extraordinary abuses of its citizens. Got that? She swapped out her offensive statement from oral arguments for a slightly more muted statement from her written decision. 
but there was more. And perhaps we'll get to it on the other side. Right? 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 <laughs> Love is what we got. Come back with us. You can join us. 844-967-2789. Your call could be first and next. So that's See, but... Welcome back to the Devils Advocates Radio Show, a Monday edition. Feeling good about our quarterback, Jordan Love. Feeling higher love, Dev, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> See, there's a theme. It's playing yeah, out right I, here I, on the I radio. I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, Dom, we were talking about the bad Bradley, Justice Rebecca Bradley. She apparently is going off and improving herself through (laughs) constructive improvements of her Wikipedia page. Very important. Uh, You know, you're not supposed to do that. For those wondering, I don't have a Wikipedia page. I should. I'm shocked we don't. Do we? I mean, I am Uh, mentioned on other Wikipedia stuff through radio station ownership and whatever, but... Like Sage has a Wikipedia page. Yeah. Do you do you think Sage goes on and improves, corrects, you five, know, eight, makes little five, comments eight, 150 too? pounds? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. So, anyways, Rebecca Bradley, uh, you know, claimed she was just cleaning up the record, Dom. Um, but it's well, yeah, you know, the liberals out there, you know, quoting her her oral arguments instead of her written decision. Shame on them for telling the truth. Dom, there's a little bit more I think we should share with the audience. Uh, a quote from our friend Scott Ross, formerly of One Wisconsin Now, supposed to be an in-studio guest tomorrow. Wednesday. But in deference yes. to my trip to Joe Biden, he's, he's being flexible. He's a firebrand, but he's a flexible guy. Scott Ross, part of our show on Wednesday. But anyways, here's what he said about Rebecca, the bad Bradley. Republicans have become the party of book banning. But as always, Rebecca Bradley goes just one step further and wants to erase the internet. That's pretty clever stuff, Scott (laughs) Ross. Uh, Bradley made changes to more case on her personal page. Again, Wikipedia page. The 52-year-old jurist corrected a summary of her 2022 decision outlawing the use of drop boxes to cast absentee ballots in Wisconsin. Of course, she's against that, Dom. The Wikipedia page citing... An erroneous slate article said Bradley had written that the 2020 election of Joe Biden was illegitimate due to the use of these boxes. Uh, The corrected record is effectively, there's more words in between her saying (laughs) the election of Joe Biden was illegitimate. You know, if it was outside the law, et cetera, et cetera. And Dom herself edits, edits haven't gone unnoticed on the online encyclopedia. A Wikipedia editor scolded Bradley for making changes to her own page, noting this could create a conflict of interest. She should recuse them or be in peach. (laughs) Yes, a peacher. Editors with a conflict of interest may be unduly influenced by their connection to the topic. Bradley was told she was directed to Wikipedia's editing guidelines, which suggest users avoid editing or creating articles about yourself, your family, friends, colleagues, company, organization, clients, or competitors. I would write my own Wikipedia page, Dom. It would be glowing. (laughs) Right. Those devils, they are awesome. Greatest radio show ever. Is there more here? Is Uh, there more here? A little bit farther down, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, We'll jump down. Let me get down to it. Uh, In addition to her substantive issues, she also updated her photo, corrected one clear error, Wikipedia page says she participated in the Thomas More Society, a right-wing nonprofit law firm. Instead, she was a member of the St. Thomas More Lawyers Society, a group of Catholic lawyers and judges. In her email to the Journal Sentinel, Bradley said she had to make the changes because members of the media aren't doing their job. Crudy, how come you are not updating the bad Bradley's Wikipedia page? Who do you think put the ugly photo of her on? (laughs) Clearly, the media has made no effort to report honestly, so public officials have no choice but to correct the record for them. I hope this clears up the great Wikipedia issue facing our state and allows you to focus on the constitutional crisis created by my colleagues, she concluded, referring to actions taken by the new liberal majority on the court. But as Bice writes, Bradley may be jumping the gun. The great or the Wik- shark. The great Wikipedia issue may not be over. A quick review of her current page shows someone recently 
erased some of her edits, including her version of the Japanese internment reference. As Daniel Bice at the Journal Sentinel concludes, perhaps it's time for Bradley to get back to work rewriting her judicial record one Wikipedia entry at a time. 844-967-2789. We always let you set the record straight here. Starting with Joe from Madison. Welcome, Joe. What do you got for us? Hi, Joe. Well, um, this is a, a meaty subject, and I would like to dive in with three points um, in reference to uh, the, the legal musings of our fine uh, popcorn king, Mr. Robin Voss, yeah. who feels that she should uh, be up for impeachment if she does not recuse herself on the issue of the, the maps. I'd like to just make three points, you guys. The first is um, Dan Kelly, in running for Supreme Court, the Republican candidate, was quite clear about his position on abortion, um, a long record of anti-abortion views. And in fact, um, uh, you know, stumped by his uh, blog posts on this subject, but then claimed it was not relevant to how he would participate on the Supreme Court. Yeah. He was also a big fan of the maps. Um, this is from an article, Wisconsin Public Radio, um, uh, 30th of March, 2023, and it quotes him from uh, 2012 defending the maps, and this is a quote, this is Mr. Kelly, the Republican candidate on the gerrymandered maps. He says, it's a good map. It's a solid map. It's constitutional, end quote. So that's, you know, his opinion, and apparently that didn't bother Mr. Mr. Voss too much at all. And then I would add to it, and I, you know, you guys- Well, before you can be impeached, you'd have to be elected to something, and you can't spell Kelly without two L's. Yes, right, right. But it, if, if this is the case, you know, then he clearly said what his opinion is of the sure, master. Sure, absolutely. To disregard that. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, in addition, in looking at what are uh, the grounds for impeachment in Wisconsin um, for uh, state, as I understand it, for those in the state court, um, it is corrupt conduct and crimes and misdemeanors. Which brings us back to that beautiful example of um, Shoki uh, Prosser, that would be David Prosser, who uh, put his hands around his fellow uh, jurists, um, and as he said, I did have my hands around her, but I didn't squeeze. Okay, that's good. Just measuring her up for a choker chain. I just... It's unbelievable. Isn't that corrupt conduct? And also, you know, crimes and uh, misdemeanors. This is a guy who refused to recuse himself when he got, I think it was $2.6 million he got from uh, the two groups of uh, Prosser. manufacturers. In town. It had right, been over right. a and year, seven- so he no longer felt overly persuaded <laughs> yeah. because it took over a year to work its way through the courts and those massive campaign donors that were now going to be litigants before the court. It had been over a year, Joe, so he didn't feel it needed yeah, to use. Yeah, fine. Don't worry about it. He- yeah, even yeah, even though seventy six percent of all election spending on his campaign came from Club for Growth and Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce, but he won't recuse himself, even though people were telling him that. This well, what do you think they were paying for, it. Joe? Well, and, and, and Joe, and and, and 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 thank you for bringing up some historical facts and great points, but it, it does unfortunately. It doesn't get any traction with the Republicans because if you're looking for you know consistent criticism from the Republicans, you know of their own, the same same way they would do it for a, a liberal, that's never going to happen. That's not how they do it. They are disingenuous and they are unserious people. Well, I, I'm I'm all for the fact that Dan Kelly was all about saying that it was a it's a solid map, it's a good map, it's constitutional. So uh, good for the goose, good for the gander, and um, we just got to push back on that. And, I mean, for crying out loud, double standard land, no time for it. No time for it. Thanks <laughs> a lot, you guys. Thank you, Joe. That's where they live. Hell, they live there. They hang out there. They bring all their friends to double standard land. Eight, four, I four. do not want to live <laughs> in double standard land. And you can't make me live in double standard land. Mark from the sack, you're up. Happy Monday, man. What do you got for us? Hey, Mark. Hey guys, maybe we need to take up a collection, buy dictionaries for all the uh, Republicans in our, our state legislature, and have um, that. In, that implies inquisitiveness, and, and Mark. Back. Like they want to know the answers. Well, we the know, ability we know better. Curiosity to read. Any any person with half a wit knows that our, our current maps are unconstitutional because they meet need neither of those. They meet neither of those two standards, and that is just simply the truth. I mean that. So you're going. They're going after Judge Judge um, Judge Prudence, which 
for speaking the truth of judge that the maps do not meet constitutional muster, pure and simple, which means the conservatives on our Supreme Court violated that Constitution by not meeting those standards. It's pretty simple language, folks, and uh, that for all the conservatives out there, look up the words, look up the state constitution. It's pretty easy to find it, and the, the, those definitions or the the words there that are there, and uh, and see that it's followed because. Republicans are just, you know, they should just get called out every opportunity that yes. find those words contiguous and compact. I mean, if I saw Robin West, to find those two words and just hope he takes a swing at me. <laughs> but, uh, better candidates, better ideas, Mark. That's that's what better dictionaries. <laughs> Thanks for the call, man. But what's the point of this, do you think? I mean, obviously, people are pushing back. The Senate is not even there. I mean, perhaps he could be persuaded to do that. Why the trial balloon? Why do you think he drops this on a Friday? Chilling prior restraint, man. Just to put the threat in her mind. If you don't recuse, we're going to bring you up on a show trial. We will drag you through the mud. And we do you will think, find do you think rationale. Rota Sayowitz is someone that would respond <laughs> or, or that would impact Rota Sayowitz's action? Do you think for a minute that she would recuse herself? Again, given the very historical circumstances. Uh, of well, examples you'd hate like to do it, Tom. But... If he was driven to do it because, you know, there was a threat to his authority, then then he'll have to do it. So then we should expect that because there is a threat to his authority. I mean, it'll well, take a while. Say the maps get redrawn, as they should be, and they're more fair. They're not going to be, you know, whatever. We'll take what we can get since we're the ones, you know, not being represented here. All right, so so that'll happen. But what? So you're going to go through impeachment and what? Then, 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 it's, then it's Chief Justice who? You know, uh, uh, Evers gets to put someone else on the court. Then we're going to keep an eye. We've got some dangerous weather perhaps going on in our listening audience. So we've got our eye in the sky guy, Corey Hartman, going to join us right after the break. Dom, there is some other news here in the great state of Wisconsin. We've got a candidate in the first CD to go against Brian Stahl, the Republican. And his name is Santos. And I hope it's no relation to George. His first name's not George, is it? It's not George. Okay. Okay. I haven't memorized it yet, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's not George. That would that would be a little problematic. Lorenzo Santos. Lorenzo. He is currently a Racine County Emergency Response Manager. Actually has a a, a fairly impressive private uh, resume in that he went and got his uh, master's degree at George Washington University. He works for the County of Racine. He's been out there in the private sector, and now he's running against Brian Style, who I find quite unimpressive. Good. I'm running because we've seen fundamental civil and human rights systematically taken away these past few years, and I'm not going to stand by and let that continue to happen, Santo said in his campaign announcement, which made no mention of Style. Good way of doing it, Dom. He added, I believe in a woman's right to choose that in the richest country in the earth, anyone that wants health care should have it, that voters should choose their elected officials, not the other way around, and that we should pay workers a fair wage, provide our children with a quality education, and keep them safe while they're getting one. The move officially kicks off the race for the state's southeastern first congressional district, one of two competitive seats in Wisconsin. That became more purple with redistricting. Democrats in recent months have put most of their attention on the Wisconsin battleground of the third district. Why, Dom, we've got five radio stations in the third district talking about civic media and only two radio stations covering <laughs> the first district. But we'll do what we can with WAUK and we'll do what we can with WRJN. But we're definitely going to have a voice in this race. So, Mr. Santos, hopefully no relation to George. The unfortunately named Lorenzo Santos. I wonder if, you know, he would consider a name change. Oh, Lord, me and Lorenzo rolling into Benzo. <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. Good luck. Make sure we should uh, reach out and invite this guy around, man, because Style's got to go. We'll call him T-Bone on the show. T-Bone. <laughs> T-Bone Just check your Wikipedia Congress. page. See what they call him. L-Bone. Yeah, but you never know because he could have updated his own Wikipedia page, but I think it's just the bad Bradley that does that. We've got some uh, dangerous weather out there around the listing audience. We'll bring Corey Hartman in 
briefly to give you an update after the break. Stick around. More Devil's Advocates. More of your calls as well. 844-967-2789. We'll be back. The Devil's Advocates, radio for the 99%. And we're back. Thank you for listening to the Devil's Advocates radio show. Happy Monday to us all. You can join this fine program at 844 967 2789. Dom, I'm in love with Jordan Love. And we've got some crazy weather to tell our listeners down in the first CD. Just talking about the politics down there. We got some. Weather to update the audience on Corey Hartman, please do so. All right, Crudy, we've got a flash flood warning that has been issued for eastern Kenosha County and east central Racine County. Goes until 6.30 p.m. Uh, about 20 minutes ago, we started to get reports across the area of flash flooding in uh, downtown Kenosha, including cars that have been stuck in some intersections due to the flood waters. So obviously, don't drive through areas where water covers the roadway. Uh, about two and a half inches of rain has fallen. There's a few additional showers that are pushing out into the lake right now but flash flooding is ongoing or expected to begin shortly basically right along right along the lakeshore Racine Mount Pleasant and Kenosha are in this warning and again uh, this goes until 6 30 p.m. so uh, we'll have more reporting on this from WRJN during the five o'clock newscast coming up across these civic media stations thank you for the update Corey you bet I blame Brian Stale and, of course, Robin Voss. They <laughs> represent those districts. So, you know, if it's a, a flood of Noah-like proportions, I blame Voss. He brought it upon the the district. No, no, be careful out there. I'm, I'm teasing, obviously. That's what we do sometimes, Dom. Uh, but Santos, Lorenzo Santos, is running in the first CD. Uh, he is the first Dem to have announced his candidacy in the race. Uh, former Racine police chief Art Howell is also considering a run. Multiple top Democrats told the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel and Ryan Schrader, the mayor of Delavan, said he too is thinking about a challenge. Schrader, 49 this month, told the Journal Sentinel he enjoys his position of mayor, but has been encouraged by people both in Delavan and around the first congressional district, including county and state party officials to challenge style. There's some potential interest on my part, said Schrader, who said he hadn't considered running for Congress until people started reaching out to him. I'm so honored. If I never do anything other than be mayor in Delavan, that's just fine, too. Neither Santos nor Howell returned multiple calls seeking interviews. I hope they return our phone calls, Dom. Now, what about the targets, the top targets? It's the first and it's the third, Tom. Excellent. I'm liking this, man. We got some, perhaps even a, a Dem primary with some solid candidates to take on. And style might be a little more, I don't know, mentally stable than Van Orden, but you know, he still, he still hasn't turned over the the video of uh, his colleague Derek Van Orden lambasting and getting in the face and swearing and yelling, physically threatening. You know, 16 and 17 year old Senate pages. We haven't seen that yet. So, uh, yes, this is great. I look forward to it. But, you know, Crudy, well, you know, we got some we got some options on the Democratic side in Congress here in Wisconsin. The Republicans are having a little more difficulty on the Senate side. They haven't fielded a viable candidate, one might say, Dom. <laughs> Not a one. Can't find anyone to take anyone? on the unbeatable Anybody? Tammy Baldwin. Bueller? Bueller, Matthew Chapman reporting at the Raw Story. Wisconsin on paper should be a state where Republicans have a fighting chance to pick up a Senate seat in 2024, an election where experts give the GOP great odds to retake the Senate because the map skews heavily in their favor. However, according to the Daily Beast, Wisconsin Republicans are facing a recruitment crisis as all of their top picks for Senate have declined to run against Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin. And the few who are considering a run are less than credible. <laughs> the few that are, yes. They're all less than credible, Dom. They're not beating <laughs> Tammy Baldwin. She's going to hand them a Aaliyah, Leah well, Buchmer, I mean, nurse, and, ratchet, and also, like double-digit 
ass whooping. It'd be hard enough as it is, but also with, with the whole Donald Trump thing. I mean, there's there's a lot, there's a lot of moving parts here. Uh, two names most heavily floated for the race are reps Brian Gallagher and Tom Tiffany. The Mike Beast Gallagher. Reporter. I know I it's yeah. written incorrectly in the yes, piece. Mike I'm Gallagher. sorry to correct. No, thank you for that, Curdy. Mike Gallagher and Tom Tiffany. Toxic Tom, the Beast reported. However, both have declined to run. In fact, every House Republican in Wisconsin has declined. What, Glenn Grothman? You're not going? The only current candidate, ah, the beat love. current candidates are a pair of millionaire businessmen Real estate developer Eric Hubdy and race driver Scott Mayer, whose main involvement in politics up to this point have been what giving donating to the GOP. Also, I thought the former the driver run. was Ricky Bobby. Damn, Ricky Bobby, Rubbins Racing Curdy. Also considering a run is disgraced Trump loving former Milwaukee County Sheriff David A. Clark Jr. David A. Clark Jr. A once frequent uh, Fox News guest who compared January 6th to a frat party is involved in the QAnon movement and who has once sued for allegedly cutting, was once sued for allegedly cutting off water to people as punishment in his jails, leading to at least one inmate death. I mean, kind of forgot about that. It's freaking terrible. There's a lot to go over and it won't be rushed or held to some consultant's timeline about a decision. I am not your typical politician. Clark called the Daily Beast when asked whether he was close to a decision about running. Baldwin, of course, elected in 2012, defeating former Governor Tommy Thompson. This comes as the GOP faces a number of other recruitment woes in the Senate recruitment, including the risk of far-right candidates hijacking the process around the country. Even in states where they appear to have more mainstream candidates lined up, they are already facing problems. In Pennsylvania, former hedge fund manager David McCormick, a top candidate for the GOP Senate nomination there, is facing allegations. He really lives in Connecticut. A throwback to the previous race in the Commonwealth where Dr. Oz was charged with really living in New Jersey. Oh, Republicans. They love them some carpetbaggers, Tom. What about that Tim Michaels? He would have been a fine representative from <laughs> yeah, Connecticut. You know. Yes. Where, where does where Clark you got anybody, live? Where's Clark live now? That's a great question. I don't know where Sheriff David A. Clark Jr. lives. What, are you taking a job in the Trump administration? You no, know, he, he was too crazy. What is his job? I mean, if you, get, you, you, don't, if you don't make it past the whatever... The Trump the, vetting process? Who process. has ever been vetted and 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 declined Denied. by Trump? Right. Sheriff David A. Clark Jr. I mean, Rudy was too drunk to be the Secretary of State, reportedly, but he was still fine for a personal attorney. <laughs> was he? Was he? <laughs> we'll <laughs> see about that. <laughs> oh, so David A. Clark Jr. It's pitchfork and torches time in America. We got we got that play that one if you want. Nate, you got the pitchfork and torches time. I, I bet he does. I, I bet, bet he does. does. We 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 heard him say that at a Trump rally, right? <laughs> He's firing up the crowd. It's pitchforks and torches time in America. Do we have it? Let's play it. Pitchfork and torches time. Ah, oh. <laughs> you serious, Clark? Come on, you serious. You serious? Come back. More Devil's Advocates. Hour to the happier happy hour. We'll talk more with you at eight four four nine six seven two seven eight nine. And Joe Biden coming to Wisconsin tomorrow. We'll take you there live. We'll play it out live right here on the Civic Media Network. Dom, in a week from now, ish, we got a presidential debate. The bad kind, the GOP kind. And we still got a wager of sorts going on whether or not Trump's showing up. I say yes. He can't yeah, resist. No, he's not showing up. More devils. You better stick around. Hour two is next. You serious, Clark? <laughs>